giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the Sweet Tea Region Recap for Week 2. Reporting for first updates now, I'm John Fogarty. I'm Griffin Connor. And I'm Marshall. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the action we saw this past weekend in the Georgia, North Carolina, and the District of Cheese, the Chesapeake area. We'll also have a whole bucket of discussion topics and give you some previews for the action coming up next week. Starting things right off right away, I was taking a look at the Peachtree District Dalton event, which is the second largest event in the district with 39 teams. We saw five teams competing for their second time after just competing last week in Gainesville. In the qualification rounds, we saw two completed rockets, 38 HAB level three climbs, and the Peachtree District's first unicorn match. When the dusk settled, 4026 Global Dynamics was seated first with the most consistent HAB 3 climb of the event, if not in the world right now. With their first pick, they selected 2974 Walton Robotics, which was a solid all-around robot with high-efficiency hatch and cargo scoring. They actually moved 14 game pieces solo in a match, uh, in the match that's being shown on the screen right now, probably. Then they rounded out their alliance with an every bot style cargo specialist in team 7883 Cross Creek High Razorbacks, which is a cool story actually. 7883 is actually a rookie sister team to my team 1102. They spent over half of the build season weekends in our shop building their robot. They were a great second round pickup that was honestly a sleeper pick for the alliance selection. I think they only fell that far in the rank and picks due to a broken Roborio Ethernet port that killed them during their last three qual matches. Right behind that first seed alliance was the second seed alliance, consisting of Captain Team 4910 East Cobb Robotics, seven, then their first pick, 1771, the Electric Phoenixes, who in my opinion seemed to be having a breakout season, and then they rounded things out with their second pick in 6887 the Dalton Catabots who showed in who showed the capability to score seven hatches solo in the video I just showed, showed earlier the number one alliance seat breezed through those quarter and semifinals and the number two alliance nearly did the exact same with only a momentary false start in the quarterfinals now the finals started out with a pretty good display of offensive and defensive strategy and power the most interesting part about the number one alliance's strategy was that the captain team 4026 opted to go play defense themselves, leaving 2974 and 7883 to fill the primary offensive roles. The number one alliance filled most of the cargo ship up quickly between 2974 filling up one side and 7883 filling up the other. And Walton quickly added a few more game pieces to their side of the rocket. Meanwhile, 4026 limited the opposing team to only filling up the cargo ship before time ran out, and they just returned to the hab to do their signature level 3 flip climb. The first match ended with a close Red Alliance win of 64-60. to 60. But this is when the wheels started to fall off the bus, and not just for one alliance. In finals match 2, 7883 experienced a driver station technical problem that left them bypassed for the entirety of the match, which left Walton alone to play offense. The Blue Alliance were easily able to outscore the Red, with 1771 just crossing over to the field to play defense on the Walton solo. The Blue Alliance picked up the win and forced a rubber match. However, this is when the Warp Corps went critical for their alliance. 7883 came back to life, and the Red Alliance was back to full strength. And in the early moments of the third match, in the Samstorm period, it appeared we were going to be in for a good closing chapter to the tournament. However... 1771 disconnected almost immediately after leaving the HAB, and 4910, as 
after teleoperated started disconnected near the rocket. This left the whole field wide open for the Red Alliance to score what they needed to and end the game. And that ended with the Red Alliance taking the win. Congrats to Team 4026, 2974, and 7883 on that event win. And I'm sure we'll see those event finalist teams again in the big show later this season. Congrats to Team 4910, East Cobb Robotics, on their event chairman's win, giving them that gold-silver cling bling. And, of course, to Team 2974, Walton, on taking home the engineering inspiration for another gold-silver cling bling. And lastly, a new thing I'll be doing for the Peachtree District is the most improved team of the week. And that team this week is Team 6705 Wildcat 5E. Well, they had some big issues at the Gainesville District event. They largely had them solved by Dalton, which is pretty impressive for only a five-day gap. They're one of the best cargo ball scoring teams by the end of the event. So, Marshall... I heard it was raining buckets of fun at the North Carolina Wake District event. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, We were in for buckets of excitement as 36 teams gathered in the land of foam tiles at Holly Springs High School in North Carolina this weekend. And for most, this was their first event. Much to our surprise, the top eight seeds didn't consist of all the usual suspects. Teams like 2642, the Pit Pirates, and Team 2682, Boneyard, and Team 5190, Green Hope Falcons were nowhere to be found in even the top 15 by qualifications in, uh, by the end of qualifications on Sunday. Teams like 5762, the Franklin Bots, a team that has not had a historical seating, and the talk of the town, Team 7671 Firehazard, a rookie team that eventually became known as the Bucket Team, Buckets of Fun, the Bucket Brigade, the Bucket Bots, or just those folks with the bucket. <laughs> they were frequently found at the top of the rankings throughout the weekend, and there was one single match where 5190, the Green Hope Falcons, Team 3336, the Zeminators, and Team 3737, the Robo Raptors, nearly finished a rocket together in Qual 65. Uh, yep, and it was on. It's on screen now. So, uh, but when Team Fifty One Ninety scored a cargo in the top bay, it forced a panel to fall off, and that landed on top of Thirty Seven Thirty Seven at the last minute, forcing them to kind of shake it off and get their robot uh, back where they were ready to hold the hatch panel, trying to score it. Uh, guess they'll need to keep that one on their bucket list. <laughs> When the dust settled, uh, Team 5511 Cortex came out on top as a number one seed. They teamed up with the second-ranked seed, Team 4561, the Terabytes, and Team 4291, the Astrobots. This put the rookie Team 7671 Fire Hazard in the Alliance number two hot seat. And unfortunately, they were declined by the next seeded team, uh, the Zebracorns, personal favorite of mine. Uh, Even though the Fire Hazard ended up teaming up with 5190, the Green Hope Falcons, and Team 4828, the Robo Eagles. So these two alliances have fought their way through the playoff bracket to face each other in the finals, and Alliance 1 took the first match with a score of 68-57. to Alliance 2 wouldn't go down without a fight, however, and managed to take the second match to a tie at 53 points. In the end, Alliance 1 took home the Blue Banner with a score of 65-53. to So congratulations to Team 2682 Boneyard for their first ever Chairman's Award win. And to Team 5190, the Green Hope Falcons, for taking home engineering inspiration for that silver-silver double cling bling. And of course, to our favorite team with a bucket, Team 7671 Fire Hazard, for taking home rookie all-star and the highest rookie seed and a finalist medal to boot. So Griffin, how did Bethesda play out for you in Chesapeake? All right. For the first Maryland event of the year, some interesting stuff went down. 72 qualification matches were played with 36 teams, and no match yielded a finished rocket. With all the matches done, surprisingly sitting at the top was the climb-only robot of 1123 AIM Robotics. With them at the top, they surprisingly caused a nearly complete scorched earth, only leaving the number 6 and number 8 seed team alone. Among the scorched was the celebrities of the district, 1885, Eyelight Robotics, at the number three seed. They picked up their old friends in 449 Blair Robot Project, and in my opinion, the grand heist of steel picks, 2849, Ursa Major. They quickly won quarterfinals, setting the world record for the highest score in match one due to 70 penalty points. <laughs> then they went on to, be, to beat the number two seed in the semis. And they went on to face the number five seed of 1727 Rex, 4472 Supernova, and 2537 Space Raiders in the finals. 
The first match went to the number five seed with a margin of two points. The third seed, however, came back in finals two to win by one point. In finals three, it was unfortunately one-sided as 1727 disconnected on the field for a good 15 seconds, giving the win to 1885, 449, and 2849. This marks the first event win for 449 since 2004 and the first blue banner for 2849. Congratulations to 7770 Infinite Voltage on Rookie All-Star, 5587 Titan Robotics on Engineering Inspiration, and 1885 Eyelight Robotics on Chairman's for that gold cling bling. <laughs> and now it's time to refuel our starship on the Starbase of Chat on this week's Destination Conversation Street. You can tell I watched the Grand Tour, can't you? <laughs> so, it's something that I've noticed pretty uh, recently, and it's actually been pointed out by, I believe, Looking Forward on Twitter. Uh, across a majority of the uh, Deep Space Galaxy, average scores aren't increasing this for this year's game as much as they have in previous year's games. So I just want to get some, uh, maybe some opinions from you guys and maybe from the chat as well. What do you guys think is the reason for that? And do you think it will continue moving forward? I, uh, I'm going to guess that I think it, just based on what I've seen at Palmetto and then at Wake this past weekend, a lot of it has to do with uh, cargo not being the, uh, the game piece of choice at the moment. Um, I think a lot of folks are still concentrating on hatch panels, trying to get that hatch panel system in place, get it up and up to speed, ready to go. And uh, I think what we're going to see starting this coming week and into the next couple is we're going to see cargo start to come into play a lot more. And I think you're going to see scores start to increase uh, a lot more rapidly. That, that's my guess anyway. Uh, Chesapeake has actually seen a different thing to where people are do focusing more on cargo than on hatches. Like there are very few people who can actually like do hatches like everywhere. So often they just put on null hatches and just fill up the cargo ship. Interesting. But, yeah, but then I feel like the fact that the averages are not increasing, I would say wait maybe at least another week until week three because it's still week two. These are this is like still week technically week one for most teams. Yeah, and in some events it really does vary because I would say week one I saw a lot more cargo being used closer to the end of the event and in a lot of other events I'm seeing cargo being prioritized. I will say that at Dalton I haven't watched every single match obviously, but um, at first, it looked like a lot of teams weren't placing null patch panels for one reason or not another. But as the time went on, it became more clear to most folks that um, cargo balls are easier to handle. It's just it's a more it's it's more simple for most teams from a design standpoint to handle the cargo balls than it was the hatch panels. So, I think null hatch panels gained the favoritism that most people expected by the end of the competitions over the course of this past weekend so it's it's going to be interesting to see how that trend continues or changes and then how average scores are affected by that because i definitely think that teams might be focusing a little too much on hatch panels because of the fact that they may have spent more time working on that device over their cargo devices but it, it, it doesn't have to make sense yet i'm not sure <laughs> So, I've heard that there is a meme of the week, Griffin. <laughs> I feel like this uh, can be better covered by Marshall since it's in his bucket of the park. <laughs> you know, you know what? Just, just bucket. I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, you know, I gotta hand it to these guys. Uh, they are an absolutely amazing team. They did an amazing job, and it really makes me wonder about two things: one, what happened the other five weeks, and then two, I would really like to know what the design team meeting was like, where this was the design that was like, we're just putting a bucket, guys. But it, you know what? It worked remarkably well for them. They did an amazing job, genuinely. And uh, just the sheer delight of seeing a rookie team with such a simplistic robot do so well was phenomenal. So uh, hats off to these guys. Yes, you're the meme of the week. But uh, you did an amazing job. And uh, I don't know. May the bucket be with you. I don't know where I'm going with this now. <laughs> yeah. so, I feel like I've used all my bucket puns. It certainly speaks to the simplicity of design that you can accomplish and do 
well in this year's game, honestly. I think a lot of teams that chose to focus on the cargo ship might have actually uh, made their robots a bit more complicated than necessary. Uh, because, I mean, take a look at the every bot style design that I've seen a couple teams across the country using. I mean, there's not a huge, large actuation device, and, and yet they are doing very well. Uh, so it, it really points out that you can do a lot simpler and do really well. And if you're if you're still like struggling for ideas because your cargo mech doesn't work and you're getting ready to unbag next week, well, go buy a bucket. So. <laughs> Oh, and people are wondering in chat if there's a way for the cargo to eject from the bucket. It the the entire bucket's on a pneumatic system that pushes the bucket up and tilts it down. Yeah. Um, were you able to check in on that uh, CHS event, Griffin? Uh, oh, did did I accidentally say five for the winners? It, yeah. I oh my bad. I meant I probably meant to say three. They faced the number five seed in the finals, but. My bad if I had said 5-1. Yeah, right. these, these things do happen. So, Marshall, what do you got next for us? So, I think we're going through the top 10 for Southeast. Uh, it looks like the list that's on the screen might be from last week. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to start reading them off. All right. So, uh, at the top of the list... If you haven't guessed it already, the number one is Team 7671 from Creedmoor, North Carolina, Team Fire Hazard. So, uh, rookie all-star and finalist from the Wake County event. So, Buckets of fun. Yep. At the number two spot, we have Team 4561 from Research Triangle, North Carolina, the Terrorbites, captain of the winning alliance at Wake. In the number three spot... We've got Team 5190 from Cary, North Carolina, the Green Hope Falcons. They were the finalists at the EI and had EI at the Wake County event. In the number four spot, uh, and it's quite a surprise to me, is Team 900 from Durham, North Carolina, the Zebra Corns, semifinalists at Wake. In the number five spot, Team 4472 from Woodbridge, Virginia, Team Supernova, finalists at CHS Bethesda. And and number six, Team 1885 from the Haymarket, Virginia. I like robotics. Winner plus the Chairman's Award at Bethesda. And number seven, 2383 from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The Ninjaneers, semifinalists at Miami Valley. In number eight, 3737 from Goldsboro, North Carolina. The Rotoraptors, uh, semifinalists at Wake. And the number nine, Team 6502, uh, not from Holly Springs, but from Durham, North Carolina, Dark Side, quarterfinalist at Wake County. And uh, in number 10, Team 2974 from Marietta, Georgia, Walton Robotics, winners at the Dalton District event. So I really got to ask after reading this, where's the Georgia and Virginia and Chesapeake teams at, man? Where, where are these guys? Like, come on. You just let North Carolina take it. I mean, to be honest, uh, Bethesda, by statistics, was the weakest is the weakest Chesapeake event. So I'm not surprised about that. But I feel like more just Wake County had a better entertainment value. With like there were celebrity <laughs> teams, there were celebrity teams there. Like it was uh, ep- epic eliminations, and of course the bucket. Yeah, that, there. I feel like some Georgia Peachtree teams are just resident sleeper on voting for some reason. Uh, I'll tell you right now, guys. 4910, I think, really deserved to be on this list this week. And, I mean, even uh, – I think 2974 probably deserved to be a bit higher, but I, it's the it's up to the voters. And, uh, of course, you can take a look at other uh, – we use the ELO system as well for helping uh, determine final rankings and stuff. But, uh, um, yeah, you, you guys got to wake up, vote. Yeah, but hey guys, we go off of, we go off of your votes, everybody. So if you didn't vote, or if you don't feel there's a team in the right spot, make sure you get other people to vote and step up as well too. Because it's straight off your votes in the FRC top twenty-five. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. So next up, we're going to give you a little bit of a couple of previews about next week's competition, and I've got a little treat for you guys viewing the stream tonight. Starting out with the uh, Orlando Regional. 
64 teams are going to def- descend down onto the University of Central Florida Arena to contend for the Orlando Regional Championship. It's one of my favorite events of the year. As a te- as someone who used to compete at that event almost every year, we get to see some of the Southeast best teams. Like, again, a return performance from Team 86 Resistance, a first-time performance for this year in 179 Children of the Swamp, and Team 180 Spam. Uh, team 233, the pink team, 744, Shark Attack, 1065, the Moose, 1523, Mars, 1592, Bionic Tigers, 1772, the Brazilian Child Bagers, another performance by 2383, Ninjaneers, and, and honestly, so many more. I really think there's a lot of really, really great teams competing in Orlando, and it's really hard to list them all. And with that being said, I've got this really uh, good video that you guys are seeing on the screen of uh, Spam practicing. Uh, It's going to be really cool to see if they can consistently get that rocket RP with all the practice they've been getting. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them near the top of the rankings as usual. Uh, One thing I don't know for sure, uh, I think they are working on a HAB3 climb. I know that it wasn't... uh, a huge feature in their reveal, but if they do both, it's going to be really great to see. All right, so going up to Chesapeake, we have two events this week. So first off, Portsmouth. With a, There's a total of 38 teams competing, with one out of district team and 190, Gompe and the Herd. Now, oh, for my viewpoints, there some of the good cargo bots to look out for are 2998, 422, 1413, and 1908, all who did really good performances at Richmond. And then good hatchbots to look out for that had the same results are, are 2363, 6334, 1610, and 977. Now, my sleeper pick for the event, 1793. At Richmond, they did decent on hatches and were a very good, solid third pick for the number five alliance. But they need to turn it, tune in their cargo in order to do really well. Now, heading north into Maryland, there's the Owing Mills event. Now, there's thirty eight another 38 teams competing there. So... So far, repeat uh, repeat performances will be from 614, 686, 4099, 1719, and 2199. Now, some fresh faces for the season will be 836, 2377, and last year's Archimedes uh, Subdivision Champions, 4541. Now, my sleeper pick for this is 6239. They showed they had a decent hatch scoring, but if they could fix a few of their problems, they could uh, do really well as a first or second pick. Yep, so uh, in North Carolina, we've got the Guilford North Carolina event with 36 teams. Uh, Only five teams at that event actually played this week. So teams to watch, 587, the Hedgehogs, 1533, Triple Strange, 2059, the Hitchhikers, 2655, the Flying Platypi, 4935 T-Rex, 5544 Swift, 5854 Glitch, um, Unknown. So teams that I'd look out for, 2640 the Hot Bots, Team 3196 Spork, Team 4290 Bots on Wheels, and Team 6004 FFX. Team 6894 Ice Java, so they had a great every bot last year, so hopefully more of the same this year. Uh, considering the lack of effective hatch robots this past weekend, I, I don't know. I thought there was a decent number of hatch robots, but that's okay. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the other half of the state came up with. <laughs> you never know. So, uh, and that's all we've got for you tonight, everybody, this evening. So I want to thank everyone who's been watching tonight. And uh, if you'd like to get a little bit more first robotics in your life and you like the, what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show. And this is the place to go for more FRC in your lives. If you've got a few bucks to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we'd really appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand, and we're delighted to have you on board. On behalf of Marshall, Griffin, myself, and our awesome producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and thanks to all of our moderators in the chat. Our next show is Infimidation, first in Michigan, and we'll talk to you next week on the FRC Sweet Tea Region Recap. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.